Hello, welcome to part three of my P5JS and sound tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to jump to a particular point of time in a song, how to know where you are in the song, how to trigger a particular drawing to happen at a particular point in the song, all sorts of possibilities dealing with time and a sound file. So um, where I last left off was a simple example where I could play and pause a particular sound file. And one of the things I want to do now is add a button. I want to add a button here that's called jump, where when I press that button, I jump to a particular point of, in time in the video. So let me go to code. And uh, in this and in here, I'm going to show you a bunch of functions. So the functions that I'm trying to demonstrate here are jump, which allows you to jump to a particular point in time. And I said in the video, but it's a sound file, it's a song. Duration, which is telling you, which is a function that will, I don't telling you, I don't know what tells you anything, but that function returns a value, which is the length of a particular sound file in seconds. So the key measurement, by the way, of time here is seconds. So uh, if it's a minute long, you're going to get 60. And you're, you're getting floating point numbers. So it's, if it's a minute and half a second long, you're going to get 60.5. So duration is a function that returns the value, which is the total duration of a so sound file in seconds. And current time is a function that returns to you the current time where the playback currently is. And jump is a function that sets the particular time. So if I were to say jump zero, that's like rewinding back to zero. There may actually be a rewind function, I'm not sure, but you could always say jump zero. So let's just look at a few of these functions. The first thing I'll do is I'm going to add a button, I'll call it jump button and I'll say uh, jump button equals create button and I'm just going to say jump and then what I'm going to do is say jump button dot mouse pressed and I'm going to create a function called uh, jump song <laughs> you can come up with better names and then I'm going to write a function called jump song I should mention, by the way, that everything I'm doing here with these callbacks kind of works because I just have one button and one song. And you know, I'm using global variables to communicate across them. At some point, someone should remind me to make a video that shows what if I have like 10 different songs and 10 different buttons, can I reuse the same callback function? You also might see this function written directly in there as an anonymous function. And I think I've referred to that in another video somewhere. But these are some issues that could be coming up in your head. But I digress. Let me get back to the matter at hand, which is right here. I want to say var, I'm going to just say uh, length equals song.duration. So what this is going to do is it's going to give me the total duration of the song in seconds and put it here in this variable called uh, len for length. And then what I'm going to say is song.jump length divided by 2. So in that sense, I am just want to jump to the middle of the song. And you know, I could look at the MP3 file and figure out how long it is and just pick. Like, you know, I, I could actually just say jump to jump to 20 seconds. Let's do that right now, really quickly, just to see. So I'm gonna run this. You should see a jump button. First I need to play it. And then I can jump. Did that work? Listen closely. Yeah. I'm always jumping to that point uh, by clicking the jump button. Now, I could, by the way, this might be interesting, is to try this. Let's just jump to a random point in the song, right? Random is going to give me a value between zero and the duration of the song. So every time I press this button now, let me play it. And hold on. Let's look, by the way, at, I'm going to make a variable, var t equals that random t for time, that random point in the song, and I'm going to jump to that. The reason why I'm doing that is I want to just look at it, see it in the console. So now, the song is loaded. I'm going to play it. So that's 28 seconds. Two minutes in. I like this part. I'm kind of addicted to doing this. Okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, I think I'm knocking over things now. <laughs> I got lost in my own, the music. It makes me lost in my own world. Okay, pause. Okay, so uh, where are we? So let me look back at my list over here. I'm now talking about jump and duration. Ah, so, so okay, so there is a function called current time. 
So what if I want something to happen based on a moment of time in the song? So current time is always going to give me that moment of time in the song. So if I come over here and if I, even if I just run this, I can say song.currentTime. I can look at this in the console and we're at, we're at five seconds, seven seconds, eight seconds. Oh, I love this, I love that part of nine seconds, or I could jump to nine seconds. Lots of possibilities here. But let's say I go back and I add the draw function. And what do I want to do in the draw function? What I want to say is something like if current, if song dot, and we're going to have a problem here, but let's see, let's see if that problem comes up. If song current time is greater than five, then background 255, zero, 255. So I suddenly want to see a lovely pinkish background as soon as I get past five seconds. Now, I'm anticipating perhaps a problem because draw is going to trigger immediately and the song, sound file might not be loaded yet. And so this might say I can't deal with this because the sound file isn't loaded yet. Maybe P5.js will handle this gracefully behind the scenes. I'm not sure. Let's find out. Oh, actually, there's no problem because I'm not even playing it at the beginning. So actually, it, seemed, it, it handled it gracefully behind the scenes. <laughs> so I'm going to hit play. And count 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. So we can see that triggered something to happen at a particular point in the music. Now here's the thing. I'm showing you that just as something that you could use current time as a, uh, 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 as a way of knowing where you are in the music, but actually there's a better way of doing that with this queuing function. So you know, it might be more like something that I might use current time for more likely would be something like this. Like, let me actually just, whoops, let me actually just set the color according to the time in the music. That's like a variable that's constantly changing. And you can see now, as, once, you know, as we get closer and closer to 255 seconds, do you see the color changing? I don't know if this is working. <laughs> Let's get the code while we're waiting. Song, current time. 0, 255. That seems like that should work. Let's see where we are. Yeah, I guess 25, just 25 seconds isn't very much. So, let me, just to make this work, let me multiply that by 10. And we should see the color changing as the song is playing. Yes? Yes? No? Yes? I'm losing my mind. Do I see it changing? It looks like it's changing to me. Oh, yes, it is. It most definitely is. I see a purplish hue coming in. Okay, so I went off. You Hopefully you skipped this last, like, five seconds of me rambling because what I really want to show you here, oops, and I lost, um, I lost what I'm working with here. So, um, what I really want to show you here is how to use the add queue function. So song current time is a variable that gives you where you are currently in the particular piece of music, but you can also do something called add queue. So the, what add queue does is I could say song.addQ. And to add a queue, I need three things. I need, well, I actually only need two things, but optionally I can have a third thing. So let's, let me start with two things. I need the time in seconds where I want the thing to happen, and then I, need the, um, then I need a function that gets called at that time in seconds. So I'm gonna say function add Q five seconds. Um, I wanna add like a heart or something, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call change back. I'm gonna do something really not that interesting. I'm gonna make a function called change background. And I'm gonna call this function change background and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a random background. So what I've done here is I've added a cue to that song at five seconds whenever that song is playing back at five seconds call this function change background. Oops, not ready to play yet. If I ever press the play button before it's loaded to get that error message. Well, that was it. Two and thousand. Oh, I got to five seconds already. So you can see, um, 
so I wonder actually if I jump, by the way, back to the beginning. I'm going to jump back to the beginning if it does it again. Uh. So at five seconds, I have to wait five seconds. Now I've got a random background. I'm going to jump back to the beginning of the song. Should, does that cue occur again at five seconds? It does. So that cue is permanently in there, even if the song is looping, and if we ever jump back to previously before that cue. Now, let's, let's say that what I want, let me pause the music, let's say that what I want is actually at five seconds to change the background to blue. Well, one of the nice things about the add cue function is it allows you to add a, a third argument. And I'm going to make a color, the color blue. And what it does is it takes whatever that third argument is and passes it into the callback function. So I can make that a variable called like col for color and do this. So this, and I'm going to make this at two seconds just so it happens a little bit more quickly. I'm going to refresh this. And I'm now going to say play. And at two seconds, we should see a blue background. And now I can add another cue with that same callback at four seconds with this color. And I can add another cue with white at six seconds. And if I run this again, oops, we've got blue, turquoise, sorry, light blue, white. And jump back to the beginning. And blue, <laughs> turquoise. <laughs> Right, so anyway, if you, could, if you knew about certain like flourishes in the music, or you want to burst of particles to come on the scene, or you want to change the way if you're creating a music visualizer, or at this point of time in the music, you want to completely change what it's doing, this add cue function will allow you to do a lot more than just change the background, certainly. And um, in addition to that, the cues could be dynamic based on you reading the sound file. I mean, later I might actually look at beat detection so you could have something happen like with the beat. But if you pre knew the sort of tempo and knew the moments of time of the beat in advance, um, you could create all sorts of interesting things to happen. In fact, you could listen to a song and kind of play along with it on the keyboard and save time codes and then load that as like a JSON data file and have all those time codes trigger certain things to happen with a certain piece of playback. So there's lots of possibilities of here what you could do with sort of cueing and jumping along with a piece of music. So I hope you enjoyed that and learned a little bit about time in a sound file. And I'm not sure what I'm doing in the next video, but there's going to be a whole lot more stuff about sound in P5.js to come. Thanks for watching.